Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here. Here, Thank you for checking out my videos. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure to go to thecombatsystem.com and subscribe to my YouTube page. Me, and it was a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you for you. Thank um, for helping me. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this guy's uh, channel, Dan the Wolfman. Right. You respect the game, man. You know the game. You know what you're talking about. Hey guys, Dan the uh, Wolfman here. And uh, well, well, thank you so much. Catch Jitsu Grappling Highlight One. This is the first highlight I put together in the past, but now I'm going to narrate it and see if you guys like that better. That was a double arm salto. Here's a sit up. Uh, Basically, set up escape to the Suzanne Summers or Boss Crusher, if you will, the Thigh Master Boss Crusher that was at Hayato Sakurai's Dojo in Tokyo, Japan. This is at Miwi Gym. This is a young boy. You know, this is, I think, pro fighter training, but I don't know. You know, probably has a few amateur fights, maybe one or two pro fights, maybe. Uh, don't really know for sure. Uh, maybe just an amateur fighter. Um, just a bigger guy in Malaysia. A lot of footage here, guys, in my later. There's definitely more pro fighters in the later. I think I got 10 pro fighters in this. Um, and a couple very good black belts. Um, but a lot of the footage is also here in Malaysia where, you know, I didn't have very good people to go with. My best team was a blue belt. Sorry. Uh, and an amateur MMA fighter. Oh, sorry. So there's a surfboard. Crucy, Crucy Plata with a surfboard stretch. And a camel clutch finish. This is a rack stockade. This is at, uh, looks like PTT, Cut Top Team in uh, Phuket, Thailand. Rack stockade, um, neck crank spine lock here. You know, when I'm at gyms, I don't know who's who a lot of times. Uh, guys, this is the catch wrestling key lock, the old catch wrestling key lock, a very good double wrist lock variation. I teach in a lot of videos. Recently, a new video came out by a judoka I've actually rolled it before called New Kimura. No, it's not in, nothing new about it. That's an old catch wrestling key lock. Uh, and that looked like that was a cement mixer to a uh, Cobra neck crank there. This guy here is the Mima heavyweight MMA champion. This was a private lesson we did in a private dojo. Um, he was also a very good purple belt at this time. Around these, this video is like when I was a brown belt. Um, Here, um, looking in the lockdown. No, he's not tapping the lockdown pressure, guys. That is a magic toll, magic armless toehold. I also put Shinya Oki in it um, at one time, uh, but I didn't try to tap him because he was cutting weight and fighting at like 145, and I'm way bigger, and that would be just wrong. I would hurt him before a fight. Um, but he also relaxed and went really low, kind of like you would see Henzo uh, do against down here's backbreaker back in the day. Um, so some of this I'll commentate through and some of it I'll just kind of tell stories and say where it was, kind of a sag headlock there. Try to tap him out with the uh, chest compression, was not able to. Gets put in half guard immediately, I go for the spinny rooney, spin around knee bar. Get that. Here, just kind of wanted to show this on video, so I let him have the arm to do the near side underhook escape. People later went crazy on the internet. Oh my god, this new ghost escape. Nothing new about it. Oh, there's another ghost escape. This is on Akihiro Gono. People, for some odd reason, think I don't roll with people good. Akihiro Gono. And uh, here's a double leg over position to a reverse Kimura. Akihiro Gono is 36 and 23 in MMA. Um, he's sub Sakurai and Gagar Musasi. Draws with Dustin Dean, Shale Sana, and Rio Ninja. Losses to Matt Hughes and Chandler and Fitch. So Gono's been around in every major organization in the world. Uh, that was a toll pull there on some big guy at, uh, um, I think that was in the Tiger Gym in Thailand. This is a two-on-one, one of my specials and should be known for, a two-on-one uh, heel hook position. Kind of a sit-up calf slicer, leg compression, if you will, with a back spine twist here. This is just the new bit one of my students. Um, this footage is a work. This is uh, the all, uh, yeah, all Japan champion Aoki showing how to hitchhike or escape out of an armbar and go right to a knee bar or shudo style, if you will. Shoot an umo plot on him. This is my first pro wrestling match I've ever had in Japan. I've had three. 30 seconds, Don. Um, this was supposed to be a, a known, a known exhibition. It's always known. It's not like I did a work that should have been a shoot. 
Um, this guy's name is Lucky Machado. This is in Singapore. Sam Kitchener with a reverse toehold. He's been doing jiu-jitsu since 1984, and he's a black belt under Cardo Vieira. And he's defending pretty well here and messing with my base now, and I'm getting a little worried about my own leg because, again, he's a very good black belt. I'm a brown belt that hasn't rolled with anyone good um, for the most part uh, in Malaysia for the last few months. And then I get him with the heel hook right there. That's the first time I ever rolled with him. I had set this up and called, and I said, hey, can we kind of do a challenge on video? And he was all for it. Um, so super nice guy, and obviously I'm bigger. Um, uh, and I got him once, and, and here on my kind of my offside, I'm not as good with it. Electric chair, um, do get him with the electric chair sweep here. Um, as soon as he was able to put me on my back, which he did. Uh, if you watch the video, he uh, here's a backbreaker. Hug, hug me, squeeze me like you love me. You gotta squeeze me like you love me. Look up that video with Henzo Gracie <laughs> and uh, John down here with hair. Laughing at Donna here because he relaxed and sagged his weight back, basically like I hope he did in my magic toehold. But you think it doesn't work on anyone? Good. This is longtime pancreas veteran, UFC veteran K Yamamiya. Strong guy, very good wrestler, very strong guy. He's getting a little older here, but I t basically tapped him. You know, he tapped with the, uh, the the backbreaker there, and I swept him over. That's the octopus escape. We saw that in the UFC once. Uh, God, I can't think of his name yet. Uh, the kind of the hillbilly uh, Diaz brother, if you will. The guy who just did the bare knuckle match, I still haven't watched. My God, um, he pulled that off against Kawajiri, actually, and then, and it became such a stall against the fence because he couldn't roll Kawajiri over in the UFC. I think it was Big John finally stood him up after a stalemate for 30 seconds where they couldn't hit each other. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, G sweeps here. I actually came up with the idea of the hip in sweep from the uh, three-quarter Z guard, I called it, locking my feet before that was really popular, a video I put out years ago, but that's kind of dangerous. So then I saw a um, guy came up with G-sweep, and then I started doing that, especially with lighter people. Uh, just showing how to back bridge up and then hit a uh, cobra neck crank there, half hatch, if you will. That was a student of mine. I think he's fighting pro now and doing well. This is when I was a coach at Rose City Fight Club when I was still around in uh, Portland, Oregon. I left that position because I, I got the commentary job, uh, Pancrase, when Pancrase was starting, um, UFC Fight Pass, being the color commentator. Um, showing the catcher arm through guillotine here in transition. I think I put a lockdown, reverse lockdown in. Yeah, reverse lockdown in to stretch him out here, guys. Uh, people don't really understand that what that arm through guillotine is, even though I've had videos on it for years. Years I've had videos on it. I think like 2012, maybe earlier. Um, and it is a difference. And it's not really even being called, commentated on called in the UFC. Now here I could have tapped him with the toe hold here. Um, put the leg over to tap him with the toe press toe hold here. Uh, really a toe press. Um, I could have tapped him and then I let it go. Uh, um... This guy, this is a Sakurai's dojo. I, I don't know if he, I don't remember if he fought or not. Ten finger guillotine there. Guys, I came up with my front headlock system in 2014. Looks really similar, exactly, in layout. And using the shoulder choke position, and going snap downs to uh, guillotine variations to the arm through, using the shoulder control as the first position. That was my cradle side gravity choke I made up, guys. I have a pretty nice video with Mike Pierce showing that. Um, most guys probably don't realize this is a deep fighter here and there's a dope mount it's actually called the dope mount besides the fact that it is a dope mount it's very cool um, so replay that if you want to see what I did between his legs it's a, it's a different way of mounting don't realize who I just snapped down there and I'm attempting to submit with a 10 finger guillotine in the gi that's Chael P. Sonnen ladies and gentlemen the first time I ever rolled with Mr. Chael P. I got a quick hug from him before UFC before he hopped in a van um couple weeks ago and um yeah first time rolling with him i'm a brown belt he's a purple belt uh we both got our black belts now this is at fabiano scherner's gracie baja school in portland he's now expanded to a, like the third way bigger location so congrats on that and instead of trying to hold outside mount when i thought he'd eventually bump and get an underhook and be, I, I, I went for the spin around uh i went for a russian cowboy surprise russian cowboy from side mile two on two knee bar there Obviously, Chael P. 
Wikipedia, everyone knows Chael Sonnen, got a fight coming up with Leo Machida. He's 30 and 16 in MMA. Some Shogun Hua and Brian Stand. That was going against Fabiano Scherner, who was like 300 pounds there. Fabiano Scherner was amazing, you know, and I was at least defending fairly well. Scherner, of course, could tap me. He was my instructor and sometimes would take it easier than others. But um, you're going with Ed Herman, very experienced guy. Um uh, Ed Herman's Ed Herman uh, just just because people haters online like you never go with anyone again. No, you're not enough of a fan that you recognize the people in my videos, especially the Asian fighters. Um, this is Dave Jansen. But going back to Ed Herman, Ed Herman's 23 and 14 with 13 subs, tons of fights in the UFC. That's pretty awesome. Dave Jansen, Bellator fighter, 20 and four, never been finished in an MMA fight, never been finished at all. Very good grappler. He beat uh, Rick Hahn, Olympian Rick Hahn, Judo Olympian, and Marcin Held. And decision losses to Held and Will Brooks. Will Brooks and Marcin Held don't finish you on the ground. You're a damn good grappler. He was getting out of my reverse toe hold here. Uh, now I'm doing some crazy leg riding here, thinking, man, can I put this in and go for like a samurai roll here? I don't know. He's such a good grappler. Should I risk it? Let's see what happens. I'm going to kind of like do something I've done in a couple of cool scrambles before. Which is like octopus guard or something. I don't know. And I slip out and get take the back there. Um, no, I didn't finish him there. I, um, but uh, here I'm rolling with Mike Pierce. Mike Pierce is an amazing, amazing wrestler, amazing grappler. I include this because he, he surprises me and almost finishes me with a ham sandwich submission here. And most people don't know. And I don't know if you can hear the volume on me. No way, no way. And I kick off and I'm laughing. Like, no, I'm not going to get tapped out of video to some stupid shit like that. Please, no. Um, guy, a grappler student of mine. Um, this was in Malaysia from the UK. Hit him with the uh, reverse knee bar. Some people call it a dog bar. Um, a little little Goker highest on special there, guys. Obviously, you know, I'm a Black Bolt and BJJ and Black Bolt and Heist on Grappling System are Goker and LaBelle. So a lot of this uh, at the end is just becoming uh, knee bar highlights. But it was my first highlight, and I was like, I got more interesting footage. So I put it on, even though, um, like I said, no, it's not the best people in Malaysia. He was decent, but the other people, yes, I know they're smaller. I'm a big guy in random averages anywhere, let alone in third world Asian countries. Um, but guys, obviously, I just talked about 10 pro fighters. I think, you know, there, was, there was a heavyweight deep fighter in there. I don't know if I played that footage or I skipped over in my stories uh, earlier. Um, oh, I'm doing reverse knee bars and stuff now. Maybe this is just an all knee bar stuff. But anyway, guys, that's like 10 pro fighters, amazing black belts like Fabiano Scherner. Not that I tapped him out, uh, but, you know, she's like 8, 9, 10-time world champion in jiu-jitsu and 11-11 in MMA. You know, I roll with good guys. I roll with big guys. I rolled with everyone. I rolled with fought and sparred like 700 probably top fighters that fall in top organizations in the world for 22 years it's ridiculous what people say online uh, just because I didn't film everything but I have enough footage that I did in some of the later years when I was knew I was getting older when I was older guys older with lupus I've been diagnosed you know nine years you usually die in ten years so you know I do pretty well um, this is interesting because it's a two on two <laughs> position um, and it ended, this is a year before Josh Barnett versus uh, Huron Gracie, and it's basically the same uh, two on two position from the like butt mount, and uh, uh, finished with the tool hold. Just getting into the e bar footage here, guys. Um, so the other highlights there's definitely more pro fighters and better people as I went along and as I went back to Japan um, and in other places around the world. Um, but I wanted to see if people like the commentary, putting the putting the knee, in the armpits much better, much more pressure there on the knee bar. Going on to top crucifix, uh, he was a amateur uh, fighter and blue belt. Again, this is Malaysia when I'm a brown belt, and oh, tricked him into the knee bar there. A lot of my students in places like Malaysia and Egypt uh, you have gone on to do real well. Like my best student in Egypt, I think he's 9-0 in MMA now. Got a couple students from Malaysia that are doing pretty well in MMA. 
that I had trained for a bit. Variations on spin around knee bars here and stuff. Mostly forward pivots. These are forward pivots and back pivots. Sometimes I'll, I usually just kick around the head, but you can also slide the knee, shin, or slide the shin across, as I was psychically knowing what it was going to be next, I guess. Um, yeah, just beginner, skinny students of mine. Guys, I know these aren't pros, but I treat everyone kind of the same. And I treat all submissions, in a lot of ways, kind of the same. Because to me, martial arts is about martial arts and self-defense. Um, oh, uh, if they do cross their legs there, guys, that's how you go to a, a leg scissors. Most people know the arm scissors, they don't know the leg scissors. So showing that. Kind of like putting in the armpit there, better breakage. Going back to a few times I trained with the look to Tarif. Back in 98, I think it was, 98, 99, I think it was 98, I did two days with the leg. Then I visited him twice out in L.A. and we drank afterwards a couple times. We sparred boxing once. I don't know if that was before he fought the, uh, Ivan Drago in a bo real boxing match or not. Um, and he was pretty big at the time. So, I mean, I mean we looked at Tarif Box pretty good once. <laughs> and I used how to use my feet better butterfly uh, guard going with the leg. I remember that. He was controlling me really good using his feet in it from his butterfly guard. Um, and I learned how to have good hook feet, not dead feet, after going with them. Um, reverse knee bar from the top. So this was kind of just a lot of footage I had already edited together in my knee bar video, four, way, four major ways of setting a knee bar video. Pretty popular video, you should check it out. Guys, if you want to put knee bars in your repertoire. So which way are you going to roll? And showing how to adjust. Oh, still didn't quite get it. You got to make little adjustments a lot of times, guys, on this. Man, I'm getting really poorly with it. I've seen some good attempts. So some good attempts on reverse knee bars. Marcin held in MMA fights. I don't know if he's got it. I don't think he's got it. He's come close a few times. It came close on, I think it was Will Brooks. Um, twice. Put him in pain against Cage with the reverse knee bar. Um, if, I remember, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, we've, we've seen it done a couple times in U UFC, uh, I think. We've seen it done in Tough, in the Tough House at least. Once that I can remember. But uh, maybe not in UFC, but in MMA. We've seen it a few times, I think. Um, and this is just kind of, you know, sometimes I put out stuff more for my YouTube people's benefit. Just kind of so they see different positions. That's how I look at things, is a lot of times just feeling out different... Uh, oh, tricked him into going for the arm bar, the knee bar, and the spin around knee bar, and showing with timing and awareness, you can counter with your own knee bar from the bottom. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out. Look for my next one. I got ten of these that I'll be putting out.